When it comes to crocodile, some people might immediately think of the term living fossils as if they haven't evolved for hundreds of millions of years. However, the evolutionary history of crocodile is filled with challenges. In the video, The Battle for Dragons and Beasts, Episode 2, I talked about how during the Triassic period, the most powerful group was a clan of dragons called Pseudosuchia. During their zenith, both dinosaurs and beasts lived in their shadow. Unfortunately, during the end Triassic mass extinction, dinosaurs and beasts survived, but Pseudosuchia suffered significant losses. Only a small group, about the size of a dog called Sphenosuchia, survived. This surviving ember would evolve over the next 200 million years into a thriving animal group known as Crocodilomorpha, essentially a bunch of creatures that looked somewhat like modern crocodile. It's worth noting that while modern crocodile are mostly semi-aquatic, over 200 million years ago, in the early Jurassic, almost all crocodile were agile terrestrial animals. They survived through their agility and adaptable appetites. However, faced with the formidable dinosaurs of the time, they had no choice but to adapt. The roles of predator and prey were reversed, but Crocodile didn't give up hope. So, when the environment gradually recovered, the descendants of these ancient rulers began attempting to reclaim their place in the food chain's hierarchy. They even had greater ambitions. From the early Jurassic, the descendants of Sphenosuchia started transitioning toward the oceans. They evolved into a group known as Thalatosuchia. However, marching into the ocean is like trying to create videos while being busy with work. It may seem relatively easy, but in reality, it's quite challenging. At this time, the Earth's oceans were in the most competitive state in history. Sauropterygia, Ichthyosaur, and sharks, these marine creatures, evolved various adaptations for ocean life over a span of 50 million years during the Triassic. Each one was a formidable player, leading to a group of Thalatosuchia choosing to live near freshwater river mouths and being ready to return to freshwater rivers at any time. Their diet was quite different from marine reptiles relying on powerful bites to prey on turtles or launching surprise attacks on animals near the water's edge. However, because they didn't venture deep into the ocean, this branch of Thalatosuchia never fully adapted their bodies to suit marine life, despite evolving the largest Thalatosuchia in history in the early Cretaceous. They ultimately couldn't find their niche in the marine ecosystem. However, one group of Thalatosuchia decisively entered the open ocean. They were called Metriorhynchidae, but Metriorhynchidae didn't change much. After all, the oceans of the Jurassic were already very crowded. So, in the competition for dominance in the Mesozoic oceans, marine crocodiles, whether in terms of distribution or ecological roles, were basically the weakest force throughout. Of course, they also became one of the first marine reptiles to be eliminated. However, since there was no room left in the marine ecosystem, some crocodilomorpha began to explore the land once again. They evolved into protosuchia. Protosuchia were more robust and much larger in size compared to their predecessors, the Sphenosuchia. Their tough crocodile skin was covered with a layer of bone plates, along with a stronger bite force. It can be said that Protosuchia represented the peak combat capability of Crocodilomorpha. The good news was that the land was not as chaotic as the ocean. The bad news was that the land was already under the rule of the dinosaur kingdom. As I mentioned in a previous video, dinosaurs not only had powerful bite forces, but also had robust respiratory systems and the ability to walk on two legs. So, in a direct confrontation, Crocodilomorpha had no chance of winning. If you can't win head-on, you have to find other ways. That's how 
the most dazzling branch in the evolutionary history of crocodile Notosuchia, was born. Among these crocodile, some changed their diets to eat plants, like Chimaerasuchus. Some specialized in looking cute, like Simosuchus. Some attempted to reinforce their armor, like Armadillosuchus. And some crocodile strengthened their pointed teeth, like Caprosuchus. However, these wild evolutionary experiments proved futile in the face of the overwhelming power of dinosaurs. But these crazy attempts at evolution unintentionally led Crocodile to discover a hidden paradise, freshwater wetlands. In freshwater, they not only had access to abundant fish, but could also choose to ambush animals on the shores. More importantly, during the mid-late Jurassic, the dominant creatures in freshwater were a group called Choristodra, which occupied a similar ecological niche and had a similar appearance to freshwater crocodile. However, Choristodora had no relation to crocodile, and although they were also predators, they were relatively weak compared to dinosaurs and marine reptiles of the Mesozoic era. Therefore, starting from the Cretaceous period over 140 million years ago, a semi-aquatic branch of the Crocodilomorpha family, known as Neosuchia, firmly grasped many freshwater wetlands worldwide. They looked quite similar to what we recognize as crocodile today. Some exceptional examples, such as prehistoric giants like Sarcosuchus and Dionysuchus, still captivate paleontology enthusiasts to this day. No matter how difficult it was, Crocodilomorpha, after enduring hardships for over 50 million years, finally established a stable foundation. Then, their ambitions began to expand once more. Some crocodiles started exploring new ecological niches like Stimatosuchus, which evolved a large mouth to filter small fish from the water, similar to a baleen whale. However, for hundreds of millions of years, the crocodile family's ambition for land never disappeared. Around 65 million years ago, with the arrival of a massive asteroid, crocodile finally got their chance to invade the land. Quickly, crocodile began to attempt to occupy ecological niches on the isolated continent of South America. A group called Sebacosuchia rose rapidly to become the top predators on the coastal landmass, briefly reliving the glory of the crocodile family. Then came the descendants of dinosaurs, a group of large terrestrial carnivorous birds called Forest Rassidae. Forest Rassidae and Sebecosuchia battled for over 50 million years on the South American continent. Unfortunately, the global climate cooled down, leading to the eventual extinction of Sebecosuchia. Afterward, another branch of crocodile called Planocraniidae, living on the Old World continents, attempted to occupy the land once again, but encountered mammals, resulting in another failure. However, the crocodile family remained persistent. A branch called Mecosochinae, living in Australia, made another attempt to conquer the land, but encountered the terrifying upright apes humans. I think you can guess the outcome. All right, since couldn't conquer the land, I'll take to the seas. In fact, shortly after the failure of the Thalatosuchia family in the early Cretaceous, there was another group of freshwater crocodile that once again ventured into the ocean, known as Tethysuchia. Their descendants in the late Cretaceous evolved into a marine crocodile group called Dirosauridae. They relied on powerful jaws to prey on sea turtles and mollusks. What's more, they survived the end Cretaceous mass extinction and briefly occupied the top of the food chain in some nearshore areas. If this trend had continued, Dirosauridae might have achieved what marine crocodiles hadn't becoming the rulers of marine reptiles in the Cenozoic era. Then the crocodile family faced another setback. Over 55 million years ago, Earth experienced a period of extreme global warming known as the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, which disrupted the global water circulation. 
Dirosauridae gradually declined and withdrew from the stage of evolution. Some crocodile made one final attempt, evolving their mouths to resemble those of ichthyosaurs and trying to thrive in the North Atlantic. However, they encountered the formidable whales and were forced to retreat to freshwater, eventually evolving into today's gavialidae. This marked the end of all the efforts made by the crocodile family. Now you might understand why I said the evolution of crocodile was full of hardships. Fortunately, they eventually found their own ecological niche and became a note in the symphony of life on Earth. This is Ancient Discovery. See you in the next video.